Ask Reddit. Airport employees of Reddit, what is the strangest, funniest, scariest thing that happened at your airport? A little different, but I work avionics on F-22s in the Air Force. Most of the work is done outside. One day on mid-shift we get told to go inside, turn off the lights, and not look outside. Not knowing what the hell was going on, we obviously complied. Once everyone was inside, the big stadium lights that covered the entire airfield were turned off, and all the entire airfield was dark. We heard low rumbling in the distance that was getting closer, and rumors started flying. We were under attack, aliens, you name it. Eventually we could hear three large planes fly very low overhead and be gone. After 15 more minutes we were given the go-ahead to go back outside and back to work. To this day I still don't know what the hell happened. I would assume that it was a classified prototype they didn't want seen. Probably a precursor to the B-21 program, or Aurora's descendant. Aurora Borealis? Another one, this time from my dad. We're coming off a plane at Lagos Airport, it's 1992, I'm about 10 years old, so I wander around the baggage hall and find, in a secluded corner, a service lift with a bloody great hole cut out of the door. It's cordoned off so you can't use it. I ask my dad about it. A cleaner had been using the service lift one night after a shift to go back up to the departure area where he could stash his trolley etc. Lift breaks down between floors. The emergency help button does nothing, this is Nigeria, remember, and of course it's way before mobile phones were even introduced. He pounds and pounds on the interior of the lift, but it's in a quiet bit of the airport where no one goes. He's not scheduled to be on shift the next day. His colleagues come in and assume the trolley has been stolen as the cupboard is open and it's not there. They carry on. When they try to use the service lift, it doesn't work. They don't hear their colleague as he's trapped closer to the floor below than the one above. Trapped cleaner has now been in there 18 hours or so. He's desperate. He drinks the water from the mop bucket. Still pounding on the lift, hoping someone will come. 24 hours pass, his family come to the airport to find out where he is. Their village has no telephone. At least, not one that works. Colleagues haven't seen him. Maybe he's gone into the city to spend his paycheck, given to him that morning? Eventually, it's been nearly 48 hours. Trapped man is feeling sick from drinking mop bucket water. He's had to use another bucket as a toilet. The smell is unbearable. A technician arrives to try to fix the broken lift. He's saved. Or not. The tech manages to get the lift back down to the ground floor, but the doors won't open. They try prying, jimmying, nothing's budging them. They even removed the motors and tried by hand. Eventually, they realize they'll have to cut him out. So they fire up the angle grinder and cut a two foot by two foot hole in the door. Sparks flying everywhere. That's just the outer skin. They can't get the angle grinder and further to the inner door. Welding torch comes out gas axe or whatever you want to call it. Of course, this is flinging hot metal into the lift. The cleaner is absolutely scared shitless he's been in the dark for 48 hours and now someone is flinging hot metal at him. Eventually they make a hole all the way through. He crawls out, collapses, and is taken away in an ambulance. He survived, but does not return to his job at the airport. The broken lift was still there until we left in 1995. When I returned on business in 2001, it had been repaired. I still think about the poor guy whenever I get in a lift. I used to do cargo for Delta and British Airways. We ship a lot of dead people. A lot of animals, too. They actually sent me to La to go to a class entirely on animal handling. There's regulations and procedures for everything all the way up to elephants and whales and shit. Weirdest thing we ever got to actually ship was an alligator of some sort. A whale. On an airplane. Flying. Did it have a bowl of petunias to keep it company? I used to work on the ramp for UPS and we had a couple incidents in my time. One of our small aircraft was on approach and had an issue with his hydraulics. The pilot turned off his automatic systems to fix the issue manually. With no warning to tell him otherwise, he landed the plane without landing gear. Told the story before, but we used to ship crates of bees in our system. A box broke loose mid-flight in a Beach 99. The pilot had to declare a state of emergency, take the plane as high as it could go to subdue the bees, and then land as quickly as he possibly could. We had an employee mangle his hand trying to attach to tow bar to the front wheel. Blood was fucking everywhere, and that shit was never the same. But the scariest might not be what happens at an airport, but who works at the airport ramp at 2 a.m. During my 3.5 years there I worked with three separate murderers attempted murderers. 
One guy got into an argument at a local college and shot someone in a classroom. Another beat his girlfriend's three-year-old daughter to death, he's currently on Arizona death row. And most heart-wrenching for me, one of my friends, a dude who I was super cool with and I thought of as super nice, was involved in a robbery that went south. His partner ended up stabbing the woman they were trying to get money from. Then the two of them went on the run, and his partner murdered him before killing himself. It was a dark time. Not an employee but a passenger. I got flagged for a random saw pat down, and the agent asked me if I had any metal in my body, to which I said, I have an IUD. The agent freaks out and starts flagging other agents over. She musters all her calm and says please repeat that you have an eat on you, to which I had to say no, an IUD, a copper intrauterine device, for birth control. She didn't know what an IUD was. I bet she'll remember now. Not nearly as funny but similar misunderstanding of IUD. Grandmother. You better start taking birth control if you don't want to get pregnant. Me. Well, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but. I got an IUD. Grandmother. Shakes head unbelievable. Drinking and driving. Worked for a summer as a skycap at an airport in Maine. A couple of the 9-11 hijackers came through that airport and then to Logan, in Boston, which is where the hijacking took place. They chose this airport in Portland precisely because it was kinda potting and no one would pay attention as much. A guy I worked with actually showed them to where the rental car place was because the way the airport was set up back then it was in this weird corner and people would ask for our help to find it constantly. Poor guy felt like he was in some way responsible. I'll bet a thousand people who interacted even just a little bit with the hijackers felt like they were in some way responsible. My cousin's ex was the guy who gave Timothy McVeigh directions to the Murrah building. The guy had a total breakdown and became a hardcore alcoholic. She stopped seeing him so I don't know if he ever recovered. Oh man. That's awful. I was cabin crew doing a turnaround from Dubai, UAE to Muscat Oman and back again. We're on ground in Muscat and hear from ground staff to take extra care of a passenger who is about to board. She was an English lady in her 50s, as you can imagine, well turned out, but unassuming all the same. But she looked completely shaken when she boarded. So what happened was, she had checked in her luggage and had gone on to security. She placed her trolley bag on the conveyor belt, and she went ahead through the metal detector and was waiting on the other side for her bag. Next thing she knows she's being detained, placed in handcuffs and taken to a room for questioning. They take in her bag and start questioning her airport police officer. Did you pack this bag yourself? Lady. Yes, airport police. So you know what's in the bag? Lady. Yes and goes about describing what's in the bag. The questioning goes on for a while and is quite aggressive. The police officer then opens up the bag and right on top of everything is this parcel filled with marijuana. She's aghast and protests her innocence, doesn't know anything about it. This poor lady is completely distraught. The gravity of it is hitting her and she's inconsolable, drugs trafficking anywhere is a big no-no, but in Middle Eastern countries it can end up giving you the death penalty. The officers reviewed the footage of when her bag was scanned, and when she placed her bag on the belt and turned away, a man standing right behind her, in seconds undid the zips and slipped it in. She had no idea who this man was. So she was let go and free to continue traveling, but her trolley bag was confiscated as evidence. She wasn't too worried about the bag at that stage. I got her a very big brandy. Lesson to be learned is to not let your bags out of your sight, even for a second. Not me, but my father was regional manager of one of the rental car companies at the airport and on 9-11, when all flights were grounded, everyone needed rental cars, and it was havoc. My father said the phone rang and he almost didn't answer because he was so busy, turns out it was the company CEO and ordered him to hand out keys free. No cost, no documentation as the situation was severe and all other major rental companies followed suit. Not necessarily strange, funny or scary, but it is one of the few stories he told me about the job as a kid that I always remember. One of my uncles was in the air on 9-11. He said they made an emergency landing in Dallas, and while everyone else stopped to call their family, he sprinted for the rental car and got one of the last ones. My dad flew from Dallas to Minnesota that morning, and when they landed the whole business trip was cancelled, so he and three random dudes that all live in the South grabbed a rental car and started driving. They stopped at a casino halfway and my dad won 600 bucks and bought everyone dinner. They dropped off each person until my dad ended up with the car the next day. We took it to the airport and brought my dad back home. 
weird weekend, but he seemed to enjoy the planes, trains and automobile-style road trip with his new friends. My mom worked for British Airways for years, dealing with special freight cases for import-export. Much of this freight was offloaded and put in a holding warehouse for customers to collect it wasn't your typical suitcases and luggage of traveling passengers. One shipment came in from Africa, a large wooden crate that didn't actually weigh very much. Her client came in, opened the crate to check the contents, and immediately became hugely irate to the warehouse staff. He barges into her office holding a frozen, venomous snake she said it looked like a jagged lightning bolt, all zigs and zags. He's screaming at her in the office gesturing wildly with this dead snake, demanding compensation in the hundreds of thousands of dollars turns out he didn't declare them as animals, probably to get around any customs laws there were dozens, if not hundreds of various venomous snakes in the crate. The cargo area of most planes isn't heated, so the poor snakes had frozen, literally. To death in transit. He couldn't sue and had to answer some interesting questions from the Treasury Department, once all was said and done. The sucky thing is he was importing them to make anti-venom, if he'd only declared the men paid for them to be shipped correctly, he would have made a health profit and probably saved some lives edit, thanks everyone for the comments. We've learned anti-venom is another word for anti-venin, that modern planes have heated cargo areas, and that Samuel L. Jackson was sorely missed in a warehouse 30 odd years ago. Going to take a moment to say that you should make sure you check with your carrier if you're flying with pets or even venomous snakes and make sure you do it safely. As one of the commenters posted, please don't ship your wife in a box on vacation. Pittsburgh International, 3 a.m. or so several years ago. Watched an older woman tumble down the up escalator. Every time she flipped over she yelled, I'm okay like Filbert from Rocco's Modern Life. Flop I'm okay flop I'm okay flop I'm okay rolled in place for maybe a minute before someone shut the thing off. That sounds hilariously painful. Nah, she was okay.